Good morning and welcome to Lamington Presbyterian Church. We are delighted that you have joined us for worship. We especially extend a warm welcome to any visitors with us this morning, and we welcome those of you worshiping with us online today as well. Please know um, if you want any more information about our church, there's plenty of information on our church website, lamingtonpcusa.org. And there's also a link to previous services. Um, there's a YouTube, we have a YouTube channel with our services as well as our Facebook page has recorded services if you'd like to go back um, and learn more about us and our community. We want to thank the many volunteers today that made this morning happen, those who helped set up for the picnic, which we invite you all to join us afterward, as well as those who are here to help our worship run smoothly this morning. We hope that um, you are inspired to also serve. There are sign-ups um, on the table right here on the way out of the sanctuary and at this door if you would like to serve as a greeter or a liturgist or to help out with coffee hour which we normally have every sunday after worship in lieu of coffee hour today we have a picnic so no coffee hour today but i think there's coffee being served at the picnic um, a couple of things to note one is in the bulletin that we will have a concert on saturday november 13th our pianist min kwan will play her project america beautiful and tickets are now on sale you can purchase those on our website through the give button and um, one that didn't make the bulletin but did go out in the newsletter is that we will be hosting a family for home, formerly known as IHN, um, starting the week of September 26th. So if you are in town that week, the 26th through October 2nd, and you are able to provide a meal for the family, um, that would be really helpful. It, it just needs to be dropped off between 10 and like maybe 3.30 in the afternoon. And it's just for um, Berta and her two boys. It's the family we've been supporting for the past couple of years. But we would love for your participation in that. So there's a sign up that went out online, or you can contact Meredith Scott um, if you would like to help out with hosting home. We also appreciate any financial contribution for a meal or toward their hotel stay. They're still confined to hotels during COVID, um, but we eventually will hope to host them again on our property sometime soon. So there are several other announcements that others get to make today. Um, the first, I want to welcome Thomas Larson to talk about his Eagle Scout project in our Memorial Garden. Well, thank you for that lovely introduction. For those of you who do not know, my name is Thomas Larson. I've been a member of this church for 12 years, and I've recently completed my Eagle Scout project at the church's Memorial Garden. So when first considering uh, options for my Eagle Scout project, my mind immediately went to the church's Memorial Garden, which had fallen into disrepair in the past couple of years. And I believe it no longer properly um, honored the people who, had, who are buried there. So I took that on and after the long grueling approval process, we started last November, uh, last December, excuse me, and we just finished it up in this June. So I have to thank everybody who gave me uh, donations and it allowed my project to be a huge success. I also have to thank a few people specifically, Melix Town Farm for the donation of Pakistandra, Shelby Melik for design consultation and Win Lisa for um, stone help, and most of all, Mr. Dave Smith for helping me through the process and being the church's representative through the entire thing. Lots of meetings and lots of uh, email chains. So a quick overview of what we did at the garden. So we started off by removing all the dead shrubbery, cleaning up around there and doing general maintenance on it. And then we went ahead in the spring and replaced all the dead, the dead plants, planted a lot of Pachysandra. Uh, thank you, Melix. And unfortunately, all the big ash tree that was there had to come down because it had been dying because of the ash borer. So we made sure to account for that. We also redid all the um, the benches and uh, outdoor furniture that was there. And this project took about 250 hours across uh, four work days and multiple meetings, including 14 scout volunteers from Troop 199. And it is now, in my opinion at least, in excellent condition and it properly respects those who are buried there and is now in beautiful and peaceful and tranquil. So I invite you to go check it out when you have free time and reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, thank you for everybody that donated again.
Thomas, this applause is not just for that announcement, but also for your gracious choice in selecting our Memorial Garden as your project and the focus of your project, because it certainly benefits all of us, and we appreciate you helping to keep that in perpetuity so that it will be here for generations to come. So thank you for all your help in the Memorial Garden. We very much appreciate it. And if you haven't had a chance to walk out there, it's worth parking across the street and getting out of your car if you have good shoes on and walking to see what Thomas did because it's really beautiful out there. Next, we have Barbara Pereira um, coming to talk about ship lunch sandwich making. And we will have an opportunity for you to participate in that this Friday. Good morning. Wonderful to see all of you today. And it's a beautiful day to be here. I uh, have been part of the mission uh, called for ships, which is the Samaritan Homeless Interim Program, which is in Somerville. <clears throat> and we have provided food for them usually once a month on a Friday. So um, this has continued on with making sandwiches. And usually there's 50 bag lunches and then usually Mary Jenkins will drive them down there. Either Mary or Diane Diaz Piedra will buy all the things that we need to make those sandwiches and the bag lunches. But what we need are a couple more people to volunteer to come over. So it's only once a month. It's only for like an hour. It's lots of laughs and lots of fun. And it's a good time to share a little bit of camaraderie with, with others. So um, Diane is here today. So if there's some people here that would like to help to this coming week or in the future, please see her before you go because it's really just hard to do blind calling and say, hey, can you come help? And like I said, it's very simple, but it's fun. And then we also got a letter this week that ships was also hit by the flood and have major, major loss of like over $62,000 to just recover. And that won't be sometime this month. And then they're going to need more help. But just so you know that you'll be hearing more about that as well. So all your help is greatly appreciated and you will be blessed. Thanks. And if you feel like you don't have skills to serve, I assure you that my five and eight-year-old children were able to help with ship sandwich making this summer. So it is not hard. It doesn't take any experience. Just a little bit of patience and listening to the wonderful ladies who have it all together. At this point, I welcome Jim Goldsworthy, our music director, to offer a little um, preview of our fall music. Hey everybody, welcome to Kickoff Sunday. And so I had to think of something that you'd get a kick out of. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, our amazingly wonderful soloists will be returning to join us for worship in the fall. And what we cooked up was the idea that we would have a solo um, each Sunday. <clears throat> we would have one soloist here. Uh, we're still working with the whole notion of will they be masked, will they be unmasked, but we will have the soloists here and there will be singing um, and then the, this person will be leading us in uh, the singing of the hymn, which you all will be uh, vicariously singing, but you'll have a voice that's present in the room, all right? So other than my voice, which is always in my playing. So that's the first announcement. The second announcement is for a choral experience, uh, since unfortunately uh, I'm in the music world and the music world is pretty tight and you get to hear all of the stories that are related to COVID as it's connected to choral singing. Choral singing is still a, a pretty uh, dangerous activity at the moment. Uh, what we're going to do as a choral experience through the fall is enrich the playing of our bell choir across the fall. And so we're looking for not ding-dongs, but ringers who are interested in participating in the bell choir. And so you might wanna consider this because I've got news for you. 
I rang bells for the first time in my life here at Lamington Presbyterian Church, and I loved it. It was a lot of fun. And so this is an activity where we can be masked near each other. There's no social distancing, but you get to ring bells. And in my opinion, the bell choir just gets better and better as time goes on. And so we can reach new heights. All right. Maybe not as high as the bell uh, in the belfry. Uh, then one other thing, I just want to say this is, you know, personal to my activity every Sunday. If you uh, feel like uh, sitting or being here for the postlude, just feel free to take a seat. You don't have to stand through the postlude. I'm sure the composer is honored that you're standing <laughs> for their music, but you know you can sit or you can get up. You can start talking. You can walk around. You know, I'm flex, but uh, if you want, you may sit down for the postlude. You don't have to stay uh, standing. Other than that. I'm just thrilled to see you and thank you so much. I love you all and I appreciate the fact that I get to be with you every Sunday. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. When I'm short on uh, jokes, I know who to call. All right, at this point, let us gather ourselves into worship. I invite you to stand as you are able, and please join me in the responsive call to worship. Who do you say that I am? Jesus asked. And Peter answered, the Messiah. Jesus said, if any want to become my followers, let us deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for Christ's sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit us to gain the whole world and forfeit our life? Let us worship the one who is our savior and follow in Christ's path of love. God knows our hearts and discerns our thoughts. 
Let us then confess what we carry within us that does not honor God or God's path of righteousness. Let us pray together the prayer of confession. Holy God, we confess that we have doubted your provision in our lives. We have been fearful in the face of challenges, and we have sought human power and control rather than surrender to your guidance. We regret that we have forgotten your purpose in our lives, and so we pray for a new path to follow and for the gift of redemption through Jesus Christ our Lord. We continue in a time of silent and personal confession. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone in Christ is a new creation. The old is dead and gone. Behold, the new has come. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And as the forgiven and freed children of God, let us practice this gift of redemption and reconciliation with one another as we pass the peace of Christ. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. Prayer for Illumination. Open us, eternal God, to your word, read and proclaimed. Help us not to turn from your truth or avoid and distract ourselves from your message. Help us be receptive to the wisdom you offer in this worship moment. Isaiah 40, 1 through 11, 28 through 31. Comfort. O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the God, Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, why shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms 
to carry them to his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the youth will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Fades, Jenny, I forgot to announce the beautiful flowers on the Lord's table this morning that we do appreciate, reminding us of God's beautiful creation. They've been given in loving celebration the birth of Jenny's first grandchild, Kira Catherine Burkhart, whose uh, first month birthday is today, a month ago today. So very exciting. We celebrate with you her arrival, her safe and healthy arrival. Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. It may be found on page 156 in the New Testament section of your pew Bibles if you would like to read along this morning. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed 
and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yesterday marked the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. I know most of you have personal stories of that day, remembering where you were not when the first but the second plane crashed into the Twin Towers in Lower Manhattan. It was a horrendous and surreal event, the beginning of the word terrorism becoming commonplace in our vocabulary. We grieve the lives lost, some deeply connected to members of this congregation We remember the heroic acts of the first responders and the risk so many people took to help those in dire and unimaginable circumstances. We've all heard stories of survivors and witnesses who were overwhelmed with fear, disbelief, and survivor guilt. The man who stayed late at home before getting to work in the World Trade Center, the woman who was home sick that day, the boat owners on the Hudson River who decided to serve as ferries, boat lifting frantic people eager to leave Manhattan from one side of the water to the other. These living, breathing people would sit and watch the news in pain, realizing they were still here They did not die, they lived to tell. A clergy friend of mine who had been there reflected last evening, there is no coherent story to tell, for there are a million stories to tell. In spite of the fragments of reality that cannot be easily summed up, she shared that she's grateful to be here and doing pretty well, all things considered. We are all still here with our memories and recovery stories, with our hopes and exasperations. 20 years after our country began a war with the Taliban and in Afghanistan, we have finally and officially withdrawn our troops. It's controversial and messy, and we lament the lives that were brutally lost, just as we ache for those who are still caught in the middle. It's hard to look back on the past 20 years and think, how are we still here? Politics aside, our world is also still facing the COVID-19 pandemic. A year and a half ago, we all went into lockdown, thinking a few weeks or months of hunkering down would be doable. 18 months later, we are still wearing face masks and limiting travel and interaction. Coronavirus continues to threaten us, especially the most vulnerable people in our midst. But none of us expected the pandemic to so radically affect our lives this many months down the road. Sometimes we wonder, how are we still here? When we find ourselves in such a contemplative pit, We are forced to name the pain in our lives and in our world. We have to acknowledge our place in the pit with our frustrations, doubts, and challenges. It may not be rock bottom. Perhaps we're well on our way to recovery. Still, so many people I know these days are running on empty at the end of their ropes the hope we cling to as a people of faith, 
is sometimes all that sustains us when we feel life is too heavy to bear. The author Anne Lamott reminds us, God promises to meet us where we are, but not to leave us where he found us. So we turn to scripture, listening to the ancient prophet Isaiah, give hope. He offers comfort to God's people, reminding the city of God and that her penalty has been paid. She's sacrificed enough skyscrapers, relinquished too many lives to count. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Even though the things of this world are temporary, our hope in Jesus Christ is eternal. When we stand on God's word rather than our own, when we await God's presence, we find renewal. We can rebuild. We saw the Freedom Tower emerge from ground zero. We saw an end to war. We have seen improvement in the threat of COVID-19, and we have learned enough to resume a lot of our daily lives. Presbyterian pastor and TV evangelist, Mr. Fred Rogers, used to say that in times of trouble and distress, his mother would remind him to look for the helpers among us, working with those in need to improve their situations. God continues to meet us here and send the aid of helpers. God moves us along from where we feel stuck to where we need to grow. In Romans, Paul writes about walking in the newness of life. For if we have been united with Jesus Christ in a death like his, we will certainly be united in a resurrection like his. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God and Christ Jesus. As members of the church universal, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are alive in ways that make us free from being dragged down by the trouble of this world. We live into the promise that God gives us so that we have hope to share. When the disciples realized they were still here after Jesus had died, been resurrected, and ascended into heaven, they taught others how to love and serve in God's name. God has met us wherever we are, dead to our sin and the sufferings of this world. And God has scooped us up and given us a sacred kind of holy energy so that when we try to live in ways that God instructs, we suddenly have wings to fly. I'm not sure where your here is right now. Maybe you're still caught in a broken marriage. Maybe you're still attached to an addict who cannot stop using. Maybe you're still suffering from grief. Maybe you're still worrying about flooding and climate change and inequality. There are many places we feel stuck, eager to emerge from pits of despair that can feel suffocating. Yet we worship the God of holy, transformative breath, the spirit of life. We are still here on this earth for a purpose, not of our own making or, to quote Romans, so that sin may abound, but so that we might be agents of grace. We are still here together, able to build relationships with one another so that all might know God's love. 
the Christian class, the Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life, stars George Bailey, who has a transcendent experience. He's at a low point where in the 1946 Hollywood film, God meets him here, but doesn't leave him where he found him. An angel from heaven gives George a glimpse of what life would be like if he had never existed. He is removed from his own story. He's not there. But he watches loved ones do life without him. He's forced to see the good and the bad and what kind of impact his existence makes in the world. This gives George a new lease on life, a new appreciation for all that he has. Much like a cancer survivor or someone coming out of a bad car accident unscathed. George is so grateful to be alive. He realizes not only is he still here, but he wouldn't want to be anywhere else. And nor should we. The church is still here too. Perhaps you've been living life apart from our congregation for a little while. We've been successfully holding in-person worship for over a year now, safely gathering to renew our commitment to God and one another. We have met, deliberated, and prayed for our community. We have continued our mission, making sandwiches, harvesting the garden, and helping to provide shelter to families in need. We have made ourselves available online and have remained connected to those who remain at home. Each member has a part to play in this body, and it has been far too long since we have felt whole. We are still here for you and are grateful that you are here as a part of us. We are still here inspired by the Holy Spirit, sustained by God's word, and ready to practice love and grace. God has a purpose for our lives, and no matter how hard things may seem, we are never in this life alone. The Lord, the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, searches us out and embraces us into the fold. This is a gift. When we celebrate our life together, God meets us here and mounts us up to prepare us for what's ahead. So if you are feeling lost and alone, or if you know someone who could use the great reminder of what a gift life can be, trust that God is sending us out on eagle's wings so that we might soar to new heights and scrape the heavens together. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now with the confidence of Christians across the ages, I invite you to stand together. And let us affirm our faith this morning using words from the Presbyterian brief statement of faith. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, in sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female, of every race and people, to live as one community. But we rebel against God. We hide from our creator. Ignoring God's commandments, we violate the image of God in others and ourselves accept lies as truth, exploit neighbor and nature, and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. We deserve God's condemnation, yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families of the earth, Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. Amen. You may be seated.
Now let us join our hearts and minds in prayer. Almighty God, we lift up to you today all American people, especially those for whom this weekend brings trauma, grief, and pain. Help us stop what we do, holy God. Help us set aside the stress and strain of the everyday to honor the lives that have been lost. The families devastated decades ago as well as those still aching in pain. May the memory of this terrible and tragic day make us ever more motivated to work for peace across our world. We pray for your consolation to be present and for our compassion to be awakened as we surround those in need. We pray for health, and healing in the midst of our continuing crisis. Strengthen medical professionals who have spent their reserves of endurance. Show us all signs of your healing grace. Compassionate God, bind up the wounds of the suffering among us. Provide help and hope for families who are struggling to make ends meet, who are recovering from floods and fires, who are facing eviction and unemployment. Provide safety and security for refugees and asylum seekers. We pray, Lord, for this body of Christ for all our mission partners, especially the SHIP organization and the ePort Center, whose resources have been damaged and destroyed by flooding. We lift up the sick this day, especially Joan Wilson, the mother of Kathy Ayers, who needs strength and healing. We pray for our church members who feel estranged and for those for whom returning to church is a real challenge. We pray for our outreach to one another to be sincere and faithful and for our connections to be made real through you alone. The burdens we carry are heavy, yet we believe your skies are full of promise. And so we pray, O oh Lord, that you would tune our hearts to your brave, resilient love, that you would fill our souls with moral courage so that we can find our purpose and our path in you. Finally, hear us pray the prayer that Christ taught us to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have more to offer than we recognize or realize. God has given us abundant gifts. And while our giving looks different in the pandemic, we don't pass the plate for risk of germs, but there is a plate in the back if anyone wants to offer a gift today. You can also write a check and mail it in or give online. But in addition to your financial gifts, now is a time to dig deep within yourselves and offer your soul, your services, your gifts to God as we meditate on the doxology.
Let us pray. Holy God, how often we take for granted all that we have and all that you have created us to be. How often we fail to recognize how blessed we are and how capable as you give us strength and power. Take these gifts we give in response to your generosity and use them to further Christ's mission and ministry in a hurting world. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. celebrating what a gift it is to be here each and every day to live and serve in God's name. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you and those whom you love wherever they are this day and always. Amen.